Welcome to your Trezor Safe 3 setup guide. We're gonna go over everything that you need to get this done as well as tips for added security and privacy. And we're gonna also go over the Trezor Suite and what you can expect to have to do to make deposits onto your hardware wallet where you can finally take full custody over your cryptocurrencies. This whole process is going to take roughly 10 to 20 minutes, depending on how comfortable or familiar you are with generating seed phrases. Uh, for those of you who this is your very first time ever going through this, you're probably going to be a little, little bit slower, a little bit more deliberate, and that's totally fine. Also, I'd like to note that this whole process of creating a seed phrase or the backup of this hardware wallet is very similar across the board for other hardware wallets, for other wallet formats that allow you to generate a seed phrase, you can follow these best practices for each time to better bolster your security for any wallet that you're choosing. So for today, we are using the Trezor Safe 3, but again, this is going to be a very similar process for any Trezor hardware wallet. You will need the device itself, you will need the cord that connects the device to your computer. You will also need to download the app uh, of the Trezor Suite, which you should download direct from the source. Go ahead and type in in your web browser, trezor.io slash start. And from there, you can download direct from the source the appropriate uh, application to be using that you'll be interacting with your Trezor hardware wallet. But just know that you should be preparing to have about 20 minutes of alone time, of private silence where you can concentrate and you can ensure your privacy. You do not wanna do this where there's any situation where someone could be peering in behind you, seeing what you're doing, what you're writing down. Okay, so we have our hardware wallet uh, plugged in. We have the Trezor Suite open, downloaded from the source. Again, trezor.io slash start. I'll put a link for it down below in the video description. Um, and here we go, we're gonna go right through the whole process here. Uh, they're asking, have you ever used a Trezor before? I personally have. We're gonna go ahead and select yes. And the first thing you're gonna do is install the firmware from the application onto your device. This is how you know that your device, you should, hopefully you purchase this directly from the source, trezor.io, not from a secondhand seller from Amazon, from eBay. Even trusted resellers, I don't trust. I, I really choose to be as paranoid and careful as possible because why risk it? For what? Maybe 10% 10, 10 cheaper. Um, I prefer to go right from the source. That may take a few minutes for it to upload. I've actually already uploaded the firmware onto this device. I tried to wipe it, but apparently I didn't un, uh, delete the firmware. But basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna click yes, you want to install the latest firmware and it will go through that process. And then you will be met with this screen uh, saying they want to check your device to make sure that it is authentic. This is going to confirm that the chip within your hardware wallet is genuine and from Trezor. The integrity of this hardware wallet is intact so that you can have confidence when you actually send coins onto this wallet that it will not be stolen from you from a hacker who may have sold you this if you maybe purchase it from a reseller, for example. So we're gonna go ahead and click start. It is checking your device. And on the device itself, on the screen, it says, allow connected computer to confirm your Trezor Safe 3 is genuine. I'm gonna go ahead and click the right button to select allow. And congratulations, it is ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and click continue. And this is a process now where it's going to familiarize you with the different buttons that you can push uh, to make confirmations of uh, basically withdrawals and interacting with your hardware wallet uh, yourself. So on your device, it's gonna say, uh, hello, welcome to Trezor, press right to continue. Go ahead and push the right button. Um, and again, because this is a Trezor Safe 3, there are actual physical buttons on this device rather than the Trezor Model T, which is a touch screen. So it might be sl uh, slightly different, but the concept is all the same. Uh, Again, the screen on the device is saying use Trezor by clicking the left and right buttons, continue right. Go ahead and click the right button and then hold to confirm. This, uh, this action of holding the right button to confirm transactions is something similar that you're gonna be doing when you're actually making a withdrawal from your device. So go ahead and push and hold the right button to confirm and again, you can click to scroll up and down throughout the text. And once you scroll to the bottom, you can click continue with the right button. You can click 
both buttons to confirm and uh, the tutorial is complete. Again, hit, uh, you can, if you're not yet familiar with it and you wanna go through it again, you can click the button on the left to hit again, or you can select continue by clicking on the right button, which I will do. Okay, tutorial complete, continue. Now is the important part. We will be creating a backup of this hardware wallet. We are actually creating the seed phrase, the mnemonic phrase, that is an encrypted form of the private key of your hardware wallet. So this is the security of your hardware wallet right now. It is at this moment where if you already had a seed phrase and you'd like to import it onto this hardware wallet, let's say you already had a Trezor and now you just wanna upgrade your Trezor. You don't wanna deal with moving coins back and forth. You just wanna import it, everything as it is, just onto a new wallet. On a, onto a new device, uh, you can click the recover wallet option here on the right. And then from there you will import and input your seed phrase uh, to get that transferred. Uh, but for the purposes of today's video, we'll be creating a new wallet. Now for anyone who is migrating from, let's say Ledger now to Trezor, because maybe you don't trust the system that Ledger has now announced that they are have the ability to do, um, I actually recommend not importing your seed phrase anymore from Ledger. I just recommend you generating a new fresh and clean seed phrase and you actually pay the transaction fees and you send the coins from Ledger onto your new hardware wallet that you of your choosing. So go ahead and create new wallet and uh, we have the standard seed backup option or the advanced Shamir backup. The Shamir backup is advanced like it says it is basically a multi-sig wallet so you're going to be creating multiple shards multiple uh, facets of your seed phrase and that's a much more complicated process but for the purposes of today's video we're just getting started on hardware wallets so we're going to do the standard seed backup now at this point i highly recommend whenever you're generating a seed phrase for whatever wallet for whatever reason you disconnect your wi-fi you disconnect your device from the internet in case for whatever reason there's a hacker maybe connected to your computer they have access to your camera whatever happens at this point moving forward you want to have as much privacy as possible so i'm going to go ahead and disconnect my wi-fi i'm also going to make sure yeah no one is behind me. No one can sneak up behind me and surprise me and also copy down my seed phrase. Uh, let's just be super careful here, right? So go ahead and click on the standard seed backup and you will confirm that that's what you wanna do on your device by pushing the right button. You also want to create wallet. Again, pushing the button on the right hand side. It is processing. Now it's saying your, your wallet is almost ready. Go ahead and create backup. Again, this is the seed phrase moment. And the seed phrase is going to be presented to you on your device, not from your computer, not from the Trezor Suite application, not from a website, from your actual hardware wallet device. This is why it was really important at the start to make sure that you can verify that your hardware wallet itself has not been tampered with because that's where you're getting your seed phrase from. If it was tampered with, you'd be getting a faulty seed phrase and it wouldn't be secure. So you're gonna need a pen and paper. We're gonna do this as analog as possible. We are not going to be taking a photo of our seed phrases. We're not going to be typing it out. We're not going to be emailing it to ourselves, taking a screenshot, uh, anything like that digitally. We are doing this as analog as possible because a hacker can't hack your notebook. And furthermore, in further videos, we will be going over uh, another option that Trezor has for storing your seed phrases, which is the Trezor Keep Metal. And I'm realizing that my green screen is probably picking this up, so it's a little bit transparent here. But basically, it is a really robust, secure, permanent way to store your seed phrase. But for the purposes of today, just to get through this right now, we're going to be writing it down pen and paper. And it's going to be 12 words. So before we create this backup, we're gonna have to go through these three boxes to confirm that we understand the 
uh, heaviness of what we are going through. So you recover your seed wallet back up, lets you recover your funds in case Trezor is lost or damaged. That's right. If you lose your device, if you if it's damaged, it gets smushed, and it's no longer functioning, you can always recover your coins using this seed phrase, which means that if someone has a seed phrase and not your device, they can also get your coins. So you really need to keep that in mind when it comes to the storage, the secure storage of your seed phrase. Also, they say never take a picture or make a digital copy of your backup. Exactly, because that can get hacked pretty easily, especially if you don't have a lot of other layers of security implemented with your online life. Uh, store your recovery seed or wallet backup securely and never share it with anyone. Yes. Okay, now we will go ahead and begin the backup. So now on our device, it says never make a digital copy. Yes, okay, so push both buttons to understand and write down all 12 words in order. So we're gonna go ahead and click the right button to show the words. And it's gonna show you them in a list. It's really important that, the, that you write these words in correct order in a way that you can read them and that they are all spelled correctly. Those are really important things if you ever wanna access this in the future. You need to be able to know what words they are. They need to be spelled correctly and most important and equally as importantly, they need to be in the correct order because these words are an encrypted form of your private key. So if you write them down in the wrong order, it's gonna be no good to you because it will not be representing your private key. Go ahead and click the right button to scroll down the list once you get through. Now, once you've gone through all 12 words, you've written them down, they're spelled correctly, they're in the right order, you've numbered that order, uh, the device is going to confirm that you wrote down all 12 words in order. Go ahead and hold to confirm. At this point, you will be checking your backup. So you select the correct word for each position. So they're gonna ask you, for example, what is the fifth word? What is the third word? What is the 10th word? And you're gonna select the words from the list by scrolling through. Once you find the word that is appropriate, you will hit both buttons, both left and right buttons to confirm. Okay, it will only ask you for th to verify three of the 12 words. Go ahead and it will say success. And from this point on, I will be reinstating the Wi-Fi on my computer. I will hit continue on my device with the right hand button. And it says backup is done. Keep it safe. Exactly. Do not tell anyone. Don't brag that you found the best way ever to secure your seed phrase. Uh, I know it's fun to get imaginative and get creative. But if you're talking about this online and you're telling the world online where you're st storing your seed phrase, you are making yourself a target and no one wants to do that. So uh, the, now the other part of the thing that you have to generate for the hardware wallet is your PIN number. This is the number that you will be inputting every time you plug in your device, you want to access it. You have to know your PIN code. This is in case someone else has access to your device and it's your last line of defense uh, for accessing your wallets. If they don't have your seed phrase but they have your device, do they know your PIN code? So what's important to know about setting a PIN is number one, you have to remember it. It has to be a number that you remember, obviously. But if it's possible that you can think of something that you will always remember, but it's not super common that you use, it's not the same pin that you use for everything else in your life, that uh, is a delicate balance that you're gonna have to uh, decide for yourself how to manage that. But we're gonna go ahead and set the pin. And we are going to confirm on our device that we are turning on pin protection by clicking on the right button. And this says pin will be required to access the device. Go ahead and click turn on. Pin should be, you have a wide range between four, digit, four digits and 50 digits. Uh, 50 digits is a lot of digits. If you can remember it, good on you. Uh, but again, pick a number that you can remember consistently uh, because maybe you're not gonna be accessing your hardware wallet every day. Maybe it's gonna be once a year. Maybe it's going to be once every six months. Is it going to be a pin that you can remember? Do not uh, write down your pin, you know, and don't store your seed phrase, your pin, and your hardware wallet all in the same location. That kind of defeats the purpose because each of these uh, methods of security 
as decentralized, the more decentralized that they are, the more secure you'll be. If you can remember how to, if you can gain access to them, if you remember where they are, uh, it has to be all a balance that you, that you know that you can manage. Again, just going through the device, uh, saying that the position of the cursor will change between uh, entries for enhanced security. So basically on the Trezor Safe 3, because you're using physical buttons rather than the Trezor Model 1, where you're actually pushing on a, a touch screen, um, when you're setting up your pin or whenever you're inputting your pin, the cursor is gonna start off on a random number. <clears throat> so if someone is watching you, they can't tell based on how many times you push to the right or to the left uh, what your pin is. It says, please re-enter pin to confirm once you've gone through and you've entered the numbers that you would like. You're gonna go ahead and re-enter your pin to verify that it is indeed the one that you put in the first time. Okay, success, pin protection turned on. Hit click and continue. And we will hit continue on the uh, Trezor Suite as well. Now we here we have the list of all the coins that you can store on the Trezor Suite. The Trezor Suite is not the only interface you can use to interact with your hardware wallet. You can use it with MetaMask. You can use it with Exodus. In fact, I highly recommend that you pair those hot wallet options with a hardware wallet to bring the security of a hardware wallet onto uh, to match up the security of a hardware wallet with the interoperability of those other wallets as well. But here we are in Trezor Suite, the home of the Trezor, uh, super easy. You can do Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, Dogecoin, Zcash, or Cardano. They already have some of these uh, pre-selected, but you can choose or deselect any of these that you want. We're gonna go ahead and do the basics here. Uh, why not? Uh, okay. Also, it's, it's important to note that, yes, this looks like a very short list of coins. There are over 4,000 Ethereum-based tokens. And so, so basically, you can store all of those as well on your Trezor, technically, all because you're going to be depositing them onto your Ethereum-based wallets. So once you've selected the coins that you want to be storing, we're going to click on the complete setup. And in the future, let's say you don't select all of them, uh, but you want to add Zcash, you want to add Dogecoin, you can easily do that as well. And I'll show that in a second. Go ahead and hit uh, complete setup. And now you will, uh, you can change, actually change the name of your hardware wallet device. This is especially helpful if you have multiple Trezor devices and you want to know which coins are stored on what. You can label them appropriately so that you know that when you plug a device in, it will be recognized as that name and you'll know what to expect from that device as well. I'm going to be real creative here, guys, and I'm going to call this one Crypto Tips Demo <laughs> and hit uh, edit name and I will confirm it on the device. And there we go. Uh, so we can go ahead and click access suite. We will do a standard wallet. Um, you can enter a passphrase as well. This is an added layer of security that Trezor offers you because this is something that is being generated internally from you, much like your PIN number, uh, that isn't generated from Trezor, isn't generated from any wallet provider. I'm gonna go ahead and just click on standard wallet though for now. And it's gonna ask you to enable labeling on your device. Gonna go ahead and click enable. And once it's loaded, you can go ahead, we're on the dashboard area here. As you can see, we're within the portfolio. But basically what you're gonna see here are all the coins that we have selected uh, originally. If you wanna add more coins, very easily, you can go to accounts and within your accounts, you can click on the plus button here and it'll say select a coin and you can uh, do activate more coins. So you can select there and then choose whichever other ones you wanna be adding. It's gotta do one at a time, but for example, we can just add that and you'll see it represented in your accounts eventually. So let's say you want to finally send your coins off of an exchange and onto a hardware wallet. Good on you. We are going to go ahead and click on, let's say Bitcoin, but you can click on any of the accounts that you want to send for any coins that you have. So Bitcoin, you want to click on the receive Bitcoin option here. There's also an option here to receive and it's going to show you uh, the partial address um, this is, I think, just to, in case you're doing this in public for whatever reason, they're giving you just a hint of 
privacy here. Um, and you can go ahead and confirm once you know that there's no one here that's going to see the address that you don't want to see it. Go ahead and click on full sh show full address. It's going to show you a QR code and your address down below here. And it's really important that you verify this address that's being listed below the QR code with the address that is being displayed on your device. This is verifying that the information is not being tampered with and that you're sending it where you indeed want to send it. So go ahead and make sure every character lines up specifically with the characters on your screen and on your device. And once you've done that, go ahead and click both buttons to confirm. And then after you confirm that it has been verified, they give you the option to copy the address, which makes it really easy. You copy this address and then you venture over to your exchange or the other wallet or give this address to whoever you want to make a deposit into your wallet. And let's say you're on an exchange, you go to the withdrawal option. For Bitcoin, you're gonna choose the Bitcoin network for your Bitcoin that you wanna send. You input this address you've just copied and you send it your way and for Bitcoin might take as long as 10 minutes to confirm, uh, then you will see the balance represented here. You can also rename your accounts uh, for whatever purpose that you have for that account, you can rename it specifically. Now I do have to say that there is a drawback to the Trezor Suite comparing it to Ledger Live. I know Ledger Live does a lot of tracking, does a lot of cookies, wants to know everything that you're doing within that application and Trezor Suite doesn't do the same thing. It is a lot more simple, a lot more user friendly, Trezor Suite is. But the one thing that is kind of annoying to me is that you can't open Trezor Suite and view the activity of your accounts. You can't view deposits coming in. You can't view the value of your portfolio unless you've also plugged in and connected your hardware wallet device. That's just a minor thing, but it is Eh, kind of annoying. But in the future, there is, like I mentioned before, many ways for you to interact with your Trezor and not Trezor Suite with MetaMask, with Rabi Wallet, with Exodus, and all of those tutorials are coming up in the near future. So please, if you're enjoying this and you want to get excited about how you can keep custody over your coins and in a very secure manner, make sure you hit like and subscribe because those tutorials are coming out and I don't want you, I don't want you guys to miss it. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. If you found this helpful, please, I appreciate it if you hit the like button. And uh, check us out at learningcrypto.com where you get a lot more information like this, a lot more tutorials as well. So anyway, I'll see you guys again real soon. Take care.